thank you very much to the Minister of the Government of uh, Chile and to Professor Jeffrey Sachs. And now a few words on my side uh, to finalize this event. Um, Professor Sachs has been speaking about uh, solutions made by engineers. Engineers must provide solutions. So I will try to say what are we doing, what uh, kind of research and development are we doing in our university, the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, together with uh, public-private uh, uh, partnerships uh, uh, throughout the world. Uh, so I will speak about an international research. Well, first of all, I uh, would like to, to, to speak about uh, uh, the declaration of uh, UPM. UPM is fully committed to the, uh, uh, to, the uh, to accomplishing the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. And so the, the lemma of, uh, of this uh, COP25 conference is, uh, is uh, uh, time for action. And the previous conference of the CHALF uh, hosted by our university as well was uh, we are action. So, uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid has said that uh, we must stop definitively empty declarations saying that we are fighting against something that is whatever, wherever. And so we must say that we are providing solutions because we are educating future engineers, we are educating future managers of companies. So we must provide solutions for the problem. Now the problem is uh, to provide uh, zero net emissions and the net word is very important because there are processes that uh, provide uh, uh, emissions in a natural way and so what we must do is to provide the solutions with self-compensation for the emissions so it's not to say zero emissions as well indeed there are solutions with zero emissions but there are natural processes that need to breathe somehow. And I will come back about breathe uh, later on. So uh, our university, UPM, is uh, fully committed with uh, cancelling net carbon emissions by 2030, it's uh, like here, and by 2040 uh, to reach a full neutral climate impact for the whole activity of the university. So that's Go to the next one. Um, well, this is not the next one. It's just, uh, yes, this is the next one. Well, uh, first slide is what are we doing? Or what have been, uh, what uh, UPN has been doing during the last, let's say, 20 years? And now, uh, what are we doing? And later on, what are the research and development for reaching the goal, and later on I will speak about the, uh, the carbon sinks. So what, uh, has, uh, what uh, has UPM been, been doing? Uh, really, more than that, we have had facts and achievements, because we have improved the eco-efficiency in the management of the whole university, and we have achieved from the Minister for the, for the Ecologic Transition an official certificate that we have reached the second step in the decarbonization of the institution. First step is uh, compute, so we are able to compute our carbon emissions. Second step is reduce, so we are able to reduce our carbon emissions as institution. And now we are uh, going towards the third step, is the compensation. Uh, a very important fact on, on that is that we have uh, included in all our uh, courses, in all our programs for our students, the need that the faculty points out what uh, uh, has to do any uh, intervention, uh, any subject with one or more of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. On the other hand, uh, we have oriented all our research and development internal program towards accomplishing the sustainable development goals. And third of all, we are working with public and private partnership to generate new knowledge to accomplish together with companies the sustainable development goals. And we have a history of 
uh, uh, working in cooperation projects from 2005. And here you are, several uh, uh, private companies were uh, working from all our schools, from all our campuses, and uh, mainly in a horizontal way through the Center for Technology Leadership and from the Institute for uh, Human Development, Technological Human, Human Development. And by the way, this, uh, you, you have uh, seen on this, uh, in, in this room uh, some boxes like this. So these are 17 pills, uh, 17 uh, sustainable development goals uh, with 20, 30 milligrams of active principle, uh, which means the agenda 2030, right? So, so it's, it's somehow a short message to explain that we are fully committed with that. Well, now let's uh, go through the different energies because Professor Sachs has said something about uh, engineers providing solutions. So uh, what are the current R&D research in UPM? Uh, taking into account indeed uh, energy management in the circular economy concept. This is production, storage, consumption, and waste recycle. And some examples. If we speak about carbon and fuel based energy, indeed, we need neutralization of emissions, of carbon emissions. So we need things. I will come back to this. Uh, so we need to minimize these emissions, but providing a thinking global solution. I mean, any, any, any solution must provide self capacity for compensation of the emissions. But when uh, you cannot compensate, other institutions will be compensating your emissions in other part of the world. So the idea is think global for solving the problem as the problem is global. Speaking about renewable energies, so wind voltaic, photovoltaic energies, there are no carbon emissions. And for instance, speaking about the photovoltaic conversion, the performance has been increased from 18% of the normal joint cells, photovoltaic cells, up to a new technology of intermediate band, which provides a new thermodynamic limit of 63%. So we are affording the primary energy sources with this. So really, you cannot understand why there is not, throughout the world, an industrial prototype with this new intermediate band technology. Speaking about ener electric energy, electric energy, here is this, here you are. Uh, there is no carbon emission at the consumption sites, but I was, our minister of Chile said before, we must take into account the production of this energy. Where is it productive? How is the production of this type of energy? And indeed, we must research on reaching some kind of equilibrium that is really random because we need compensation between the production of energy and the consumption of this type of energy. If we speak about nuclear energy, uh, really this is a zero emissions energy. So what's the problem? The problem is the waste, the waste and the recycling of the waste. So. The research now in this energy is to come back to fusion and to go ahead in transmuting radioactive elements into other elements that, has, that have zero useful life as radioactive elements or at least a very short life as radioactive elements. So the focus of the research is here to achieve a zero emissions energy. If we speak about chemical energy, this energy is used to storage of the types of energy once they are produced. At this point, we need to increase reliability and capacity to avoid failures in the services and applications using uh, this type of energy. Let's imagine a car that is stopped in the middle of the road because the batteries fail. So the solutions at this point in time are hybrid solutions as interim solutions based on carbon emissions. So is the next technology is the hydro, hydrogen, hydrogen cells that maybe could be the future for road, uh, rail with and aerospace transport services. 
uh, really there is the need to progress uh, on a storage reliability because the molecule of, uh, of, of the hydrogen is, is small, it's very small, and there are some problems with the recipients. Really now there are industrial prototypes of trucks, buses, and cars based on hydrogen cells. So the question is if this is the, the future. So we are researching very much on that. And once, uh, once having spoken about the, uh, the energies, I would like uh, to speak about the carbon sinks. Uh, uh, really, carbon sinks are from artificial to, from natural carbon sinks to uh, artificial carbon sinks. So, uh, indeed, we need uh, to improve management efficiency to avoid food waste in huge people concentrations. We need to reduce uh, the greenhouse gases and water spent because improving the architecture, uh, uh, the agricultural techniques, sorry, is uh, to increase the efficiency of water use and consequently the its cycle, the, the water cycle. But we must as well leverage the biomass impact for carbon storage. This is important, is to manage forest, land and soil management, afforestation, reforestation, to increase the soil carbon sequestration in croplands and grasslands, to use the bioenergy for capturing uh, carbon, and the prevention and high efficiency in, sol in solving with fast interventions the huge environmental disasters. So really, this is managing the biomass to compensate, to, uh, to have self-compensation of natural processes that need to breathe, that not natural processes that need to provide emissions because they need to breathe. And this, to, in the, to increase efficiency about animal nutrition, is as well another point. And finally, uh, research and development is oriented to achieve the artificial photosynthesis. Artificial photosynthesis at this point in time by means of designing hybrid multi multifunctional materials. Really, this could uh, uh, break the, uh, the border uh, of the knowledge. So, uh, after that, um, really, as I'm saying, uh, the, the, the Earth is breathing. The Earth is breathing. The question is that the planet has been designed to compensate its natural and environmental emissions, carbon emissions, with accordingly limited capacity. So new activities, either natural or artificial, need as well to breathe. And uh, these processes are currently breathing and are breathing very much. And we need to compensate the, the emissions of this breathing. And I'm speaking as well about natural processes. If, if we want to leverage the production of uh, animals, so this is natural because the animals breathe. And we breathe as well. If we are more inhabitants, we breathe. There are normal processes breathing. The Balkans breathe. So we need to compensate it uh, into natural, uh, to, 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 to recover the natural equilibrium. So what are the research summary that we are doing, doing and we should do? Any project based on energy sources with zero emissions, carbon emissions, must be fully compliant with the concept of circular economy, economy and the concept of the SDGs defined by the United Nations. So this is concerning new energy sources, zero carbon emissions. For instance, I would say to be uh, uh, compliant with the waste and the recycle. This is just an example. Second point, any project must provide interdisciplinary full capacity for self-compensation of whatever in case carbon emissions based on either natural or artificial techniques to correct either natural or artificial emissions, and not respectively. And as well, a global thinking and perhaps yearly compensation cycle, as I'm saying during these words. 
And finally, engineering projects to reduce the current excess, the current excess of, of carbon emissions in the atmosphere, the carbon that is existing, currently existing because of those, that excess of breathing of the earth, we must come back to the natural equilibrium. And we must do it either leveraging natural solutions, for instance, the reforestation, or generating artificial solutions, as for instance, artificial, artificial chlorophyllic function. And this is the report of uh, IPCC 219, where uh, you can see that uh, if we don't cut emissions as soon as possible, and we don't compensate emissions as soon as possible, we need more technological effort in the artificial way to compensate the existing carbon in the atmosphere. So just coming to an end, I would like to finalize saying that uh, the Sustainable Development Goals Declaration of United Nations is so important as it was the Human Declaration, uh, the, the Universal uh, Declaration for Human Rights. In fact, the declaration of the Spanish goal uh, ODS, in English SDGs, can be seen as an updated to the current circumstances and somehow summarized version of that universal declaration of the human right. So UPM is fully committed to the SDGs, involving public-private partnership throughout the world and educating engineers this way for being citizens of the world and managers of uh, uh, corporations. And when, when I'm saying citizens of the world and managers of corporations, I'm just following the speech of Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the former secretary of the United Nations, because he said that he was saying there is no planet B as citizen of the world. To finalize this words, I would like to thank, to thank to the School of Industrial Engineers of our university for hosting this event today in the morning, to the Spanish government uh, for having trusted on us for organization of uh, very many events during this COP25 and during the previous COI 15th, and to the Chile government for having trusted on Spain for the organization of uh, this event. Uh, to the General Secretary of the United Nations uh, and to the Higher Commissioner of the Spanish Government for the 2030 Agenda, who are present on, uh, uh, who was present, the General Secretary, in the COI 15 last week on Sunday, and uh, uh, to the Spanish Government High Commissioner, because they are, she is accompanying all of us in the most of events. Thanks to SDSN for organizing this particular event in the morning. Uh, Professor Sachs and uh, seeing Edma Torres at first uh, row. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for, to the introducers, Professor Carrasco, Professor Valladares. Thanks to the local organizing team of Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. I would say faculty, personnel, volunteers, students, everybody conducted by the Vice Rector for Quality and Efficiency, Professor Garrido, um, especially to the school, as I said before, to its team, to, to your team here in the school, to our team in the school, and uh, Institute for Technology for Human Development of UPM, uh, Director Professor Matajx, including as well the UPM Director for Cooperation, Professor Sierra, and Professor Lumbreras, who has been appointed as member of the board for climate change of the European Commission. So I would say thanks everybody for coming here. Meanwhile, meanwhile enjoy Madrid during these uh, days. And I would like to, have, to hold if uh, our Minister of, of Chile and uh, Professor Sachs have no inconvenience, I would like a picture with all volunteers that have made this possible. Uh, because they are very happy to do it just as volunteers and they must receive from us a recognition. So thank you very much, everybody.